What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we are coming to you from Zalha and we're going to talk about Riviera Maya. Things to know. Let's get into it. Yeah, so the first thing you want to know is what exactly is Riviera Maya? It's the Yucatan coast that faces towards the Caribbean Sea. So from uh, Belize all the way up towards right where Cancun is, that whole area in between, that includes Acamal, Playa del Carmen, uh, Tulum, that whole area, Bacalar, that's all Riviera Maya. So uh, why do they call it that? Well, you ever heard of the French Riviera? Uh, this is why they call it that is because you have the coastline right there and this is where the Mayans lived. So Riviera Maya. So the Riviera Maya is actually famous for all of its resorts. That's what this place is known for. Uh, you've got many different villages, uh, small villages where they have just big resort communities, uh, 300, 400, all-inclusive, uh, non-inclusive, all these different uh, types of mega chain resorts. Every time you're driving down the freeway right alongside here, you'll see on both sides of the road, these big complexes, that's where all the resorts are. Uh, when you're in small towns like uh, Akamal, that's basically one big giant uh, resort compound. Whereas Playa del Carmen, it does have resorts, but it's got mostly hotels in there. Same thing with Hotel Zone up in Cancun. Uh, they are, there are some resorts in between, but for the most part, you're either gonna be staying at a resort or you're gonna be staying at some chain hotel or even a Airbnb. We've stayed at uh, both. I prefer the smaller hotels to the bigger ones. Yeah, so there's a lot of activities that you're going to want to do when you come here. Zaha, owned by Eshkaret. Eshkaret is a main park, which is a cultural center, an aquatic park, a uh, historical park, lots of different things at the Eshkaret main park. But here at Zaha, which is another Eshkaret uh, property, it's more of an eco park. So your, your activities are going to be different or explore. So there's various different uh, theme parks, and then there's actually going out into activities like uh, Tulum Archaeological Site or Chichen Itza. The closest ones that you're going to really see are going to be Tulum Archaeological Site. Most people are probably going to go there. Look at this little guy right here. He wants to come and be in the camera. He like came running right up here. Okay, those are all over the uh, Riviera Maya. Uh, we'll talk about uh, animals, but get, getting back into the uh, things, the activities. Uh, most of them are going to be like going to cenotes which are privately owned uh, so they're not going to be regulated whereas you go to these theme parks they are regulated that means you know you're going to do the mass thing uh, there are going to be guidelines and restrictions you're going to a cenote there's no re regulation it's a free-for-all they can have a whole bunch of people in there over in these regulated places there's limitations to how many people can come here All right, so is Riviera Maya family friendly? And my answer would be yes, but is everywhere uh, family friendly? No. Uh, many people think that it's a honeymoon destination or a spring break destination, but as you can see here at Zaha, there's tons of kids. People brought their kids from uh, the US, from Europe, from all over the world, and they bring them to these theme parks, like I was telling you about earlier, uh, and the resorts. They do have some pretty good accommodations specifically for families. So yes, Riviera Maya is a place you can totally bring all three of your kids, five of your kids, ten of your grandkids, who knows how many, and have a really good time. But you will want to come to places like Eshkaret or Zaha. When it comes to safety in Riviera Maya, that's probably something you're really concerned about. Uh, I would say overall it is really safe. I mean, uh, Cozumel, that's an island just off the coast of Riviera Maya, pretty safe place. A lot of people don't think it's safe uh, when they get here until they get out, get around. But uh, overall, I would say this whole place, Playa del Carmen, walking around here, there's going to be isolated incidents. But for the most part, it's a really safe place. So don't be too concerned. Uh, obviously, at night, it gets a little bit uh, more wild. But pretty much going around in the daytime, it's a safe place. So when it comes to the weather out here, you're going to notice that uh, the dry season is kind of inverted. Here we are in the tropics. It's going to be from November till about March or February. That's the dry season, probably the best time to come here. The hottest time to be here is going to be June. 
Um, believe it or not, March, May through May, not necessarily the best time to be here, even though it's spring, spring break, a lot of people like to come here during that time period. Uh, it does get really hot, muggy, and humid. We're here uh, in March right now, and uh, it's pretty humid. I mean, the sun can be cooking hot. So, uh, but overall, they do get, uh, you know, some hurricanes, be aware of that. That's gonna happen probably starting in August until about November at the latest. So, you can travel here, it's just be aware that that's possibly when some hurricanes could show up. So do a little bit of research on uh, hurricane season before you book during that time period. Yeah, so when it comes to transportation, the best way to get around is probably going to be taxi, unless you have a private car. So if you actually have a rental car, that will get you pretty much up and down the coast, although the driving is a bit wild. I mean, people drive in the middle of the road, uh, you got taxi cabs, <laughs> even the ones that you're driving in, they're gonna be coming, like driving basically in the middle of the road, kind of swerving in and out. The roads are not straight, they're like curbs uh, right in the middle of the road. Uh, you'll have oncoming traffic, you know, <laughs> it's just a wild uh, cruise but when you're in a taxi cab that's probably the most ideal or they have this Aventura uh, it's like an uh, there's a I don't know the exact name of it but it's what the locals take it's a lot cheaper but uh, again it's not a regulated deal so with the taxis it's regulated but when you're if you want to save some money they do have a line that goes up and down the uh, the highway from basically Tulum all the way up to Playa del Carmen maybe even up above Cancun just cheaper but not regulated, a little bit more wild. When I say wild, I mean like, you know, it's it's a free for all. And that's how the locals like to do it. When you gringos show up here, you guys want regulations. You want to be protected, you want to be safe. And uh, I understand that, but that's, that's basically transportation out here. They do have some shuttles also. Shuttles are, are good, but you got to stop uh, every once in a while and drop off. And then you got to go to the next hotel, drop off or pick up. And then sometimes if you're the last one to get picked up or dropped off, it can really, uh, be a hassle in the shuttles yeah so the flora and the fauna the plant life the vegetation and the animals let's see I'll tell you what's out here so they do have snakes okay they also have these ring-tailed kind of cats I would call them Makota Monday but that's not what they're called down here they do have some jaguars they have about five different species of large cats that are out here the jaguar the puma and a couple other smaller cats uh, but you won't you rarely come across those now uh, there are those uh, brown recluse spiders. So just things that you'll wanna keep in mind out here. They do have those black iguanas. Uh, so, but there's not a lot of predators out there aside from the big cats, so you're good. They do have two different species of monkeys that you'll find out here. The Mexican spider monkey, I can't remember the other one, uh, but good luck to finding that. Then in the uh, marine wildlife, you'll see manatees, you'll see stingrays, you'll see dolphins. Uh, although it's not as abundant as I would like it to be. When it comes to the plant life, you can see lots of tropical plants out here. You've got these palm trees. It's really a true rainforest out here in the Yucatan and Riviera Maya. So uh, I don't know about hiking through all that thick brush, but you know, the Mayans, they used to live here. So pretty cool. All right, let's talk nightlife in Riviera Maya. I'm gonna tell you right now, Playa del Carmen is popping nightlife straight up. If you want nightlife, that's where you're gonna go. Everyone thinks you gotta go to Cozumel uh, and then you're gonna have this great time. Cozumel is not really a party place. <laughs> and you know, you just leave Car Playa del Carmen and you go across the ferry. Be careful with that because uh, the Orange Ferry is 40 minutes. The Del Mar is 20 minutes. Stay away from the orange one, unless you like inhaling, uh, <laughs> what is it? Um, gas, toxic fumes. Uh, but as far as the nightlife goes, Tulum's gonna have some nightlife, Playa del Carmen gonna have some nightlife, Cozumel not so much. I, I mentioned that even though it's an island, uh, but um, Cancun has some pretty good nightlife, but overall I would say Playa del Carmen, that's the spot to be if you're a big nightlife kind of person. So is Tulum getting going with that. So for those of you who are curious, if you can come to Riviera Maya and genuinely relax, absolutely. Make sure you pick a really nice hotel resort that has a pool, great ambiance, and you can totally escape that rat race that you're in. Come on down here and relax. It's a really, it is a relaxing environment. Um, some people come down here to even work for extended periods of time just to get into a relaxing environment while working uh, maybe remotely. Uh, 
but you can see right now I'm relaxing in the jungle. You could sit and relax on a beach. You could sit and relax by a pool. Totally relaxing place. So if you're one of those people who just needs a moment to relax, you're gonna find that here in Riviera Maya. But me personally, I like the adventures. Yeah, so when it comes to the bugs out here in uh, Riviera Maya, there are these no see or I can't see them, or the invisible bugs that'll get you, especially in Tulum. So they're not too bad in Playa del Carmen, uh, and they are kind of seasonal. There are gonna be certain types of years or time of the year when it's gonna be worse, but uh, down in Tulum, they do say you wanna bring some uh, bug spray. So uh, right now, I'm not dealing with any mosquitoes or any bugs right here, those no see but uh, they do have them in Tulum. I've been told that a couple times. So, uh, bug spray it is. Manatees are. All right, guys, so that's gonna conclude this episode of Things to Know About Riviera Maya. Watch some of these other videos here. If you guys are looking to uh, learn more about Mexico, I'll put some links right here. We've gone all over Mexico. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.